Right? 5.2? Yeah, this goes. I know it's been several hours since the last time. Quite dark. Kral is glad for your return, though. Say it. it remains to be seen if she is glad tidings for you. This goes for a surprise. If you come to inquire about the Archons, fear not, Master Batoya's treatment has proven effective in stabilizing their corporeal ether. We mustn't grow complacent, however. Uh, potent though these magics may be, they are not without limits. We can only hope they afford us enough time for the Crystal Exarch to complete his work. If only we could go with you to, to the first and help. Pardon the inter interruption, but I come better bearing ur urgent news. Oh, Maxima. Ah, as it goes, it's been far too long, my friend. Forgive me, I don't believe we have been formally introduced. Maxima, former Guardian Ambassador. I remain here in Eosia under the auspices of C Commander Aldin. And offering what counsel I can in the hopes of resolving the present conflict with the Empire. Ah yes, I've heard stories of the defector from the Garlemov, but never mind that. You said you have heard of news. Indeed. As you may ha have heard, the Imperial c capital is in turmoil, and a sizable portion of the Guardian forces have been recalled from the Gimlet Dark. With their numbers so greatly diminished, the main host of the Alliance has withdrawn, leaving the Alamegan resistance to keep watch over the border. And it is there we have welcomed the most unexpected visitor, who claims that his this de-escalation may belie growing dangers and unforeseen threats. Commander Aldin has arranged for an impromptu meeting to discuss these revelations. He has also requested a representative of the science attend as well, though it is clear to whom he wished I extend this invitation. It would seem time, time is of the essence. Well, uh, you'll not be attending this meeting alone, though I am not as well versed in the affairs of city states as your, as our comrades. I see no reason to dis to burden a single scion for all this. Yes, of course. Then we must make for the uh, Alamegan quarter for all hates. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going, you two. Make sure I hit the right button. Commander Aldin waits in the Royal Palace, if you would follow me. Ah, guys. They're here, Commander. And I, for one, am grateful that they are. Told you've been busy since our paths last crossed at the Gimlet Dark. Not that I understand half of it. When the science spoke of other worlds, I'd struggle to describe what I pictured. Mayhap things would seem clearer were I to hear the tale from your own lips. But I'm afraid the situation will not afford us that luxury. I trust you two require no introduction. We meet again, hero of Eorzea. Must we repeat this ridiculous display? 
I pose no threat to you, though what I come to warn you of very well might. Had he meant to do us harm, I hazard he would have kept to the shadows and brought more than two companions. We need not pretend to be the best of friends, but I hope we can put aside our differences for the present. I'll be watching you. As you are doubtless aware, Sir Estinian and I cooperated to rid the world of Black Rose in your absence. Our journey together took us as far as the Imperial Palace, where we witnessed Emperor Varus meet his death at Xenos' hand. Being the sole witnesses to this crime, and in no position to defend our innocence, we were then forced to flee, each pursuing his own avenue of escape. When we were later reunited, Estinian claimed to have encountered an unfamiliar kind of machina during his flight, but to me his description seemed anything but, and upon further investigation I found that I was right. The Empire is developing a new Ultima weapon. What, that elegant monstrosity, created to vanquish primals? With which you yourself once thought to conquer Eorzea? The same. In my foolishness, I sought to harness its power, and became the Asian's pawn in so doing. But you know as well as I how that tale ended. The weapon itself, excavated from beneath this very city, was destroyed ere we could fully unravel its secrets, and that should have been the end of it. But unlikely as it sounds, the Empire's efforts to recreate it have somehow borne fruit, primarily through secret research conducted by the Seventh Imperial Legion, it would seem. Wait, the Seventh was all but annihilated at Cartano, along with its Legatus. Indeed, few survived. The Seventh, as it is now, has little in common with the Legion led by Vandanus, and its leadership has changed hands several times since. Precisely how this project has continued despite such turmoil, and under whose auspices, remains a mystery. What we do know, however, is that a number of prototypes have been produced, and that one of them is on its way to Eorzea. We attempted to stop it, but it was all we could do to slow its progress, so we resolved instead to bring you warning. And right glad are we that you did, though it soundly dashed our hopes that tensions might ease at last. As it is, we've begun to strengthen our presence in the Gimlet Dark, and are assembling a force to meet the coming threat. A force with you in its vanguard, I hope. Before you say anything, I know full well you have pressing concerns of your own. Your comrades remain in peril, and I would not ask you to forsake them. But the fact remains that you and you alone have faced the Ultima Weapon and emerged victorious. We need you. And so, when the time comes, if your comrades can spare you, I bid you lend us your strength. I've assigned an officer to await your word. The Asian's downfall was to be the work of my remaining days. But it was my hand that kindled these flames, and I cannot allow them to spread any further. I will do what I must to see this mistake consigned to history once and for all. Even if it means begging your aid. The fates will enjoy the irony, even as I endure the ignominy. I too shall make for the border and offer my skills, meager though they seem in such company. Mayhap we shall meet there anon. Though we can ill afford to ignore the coming of a new Ultima weapon, our friend's plight grows ever more precarious 
and none save you can join them in the first. I only hope you are not forced to make a choice. This is a prelude to uh, the, a trial series called the Sar Warlet. As ever, the way forward is paved with difficult decisions. We can ill afford to ignore the threat of the new ultimate weapon, but with each passing day, the plight of the Scions grows ever more perilous. If you cannot stay for a debriefing on the ultimate weapon, I will not stop you. I only ask that you confer with me before returning to the first. I take it that you're ready to return to the first, then I would ask that you apprise the others of recent events here in the source. Namely, Zeno's return and the development of a new Ultima weapon. As for their bodies, may assure them, Master Matoya and I will continue doing what we can to keep their corporeal ether stable. stable. Safe travels, Essicos. Hope to see you and the other Scion soon. Come at a most opportune time, my friend. I've made something of a breakthrough in my research in the soul, on the soul, who means to return the science home. Trust you two have been making good use of your time. Yeah, I just found out that there's new multiple weapons. They have ill tidings from the source. No, so than the others. They might be appraised of the situation. Now that we are all here, what news from the source? Exposition. A new Ultima weapon. We must count ourselves lucky that Gaius has pledged his assistance. While this is indeed a worrying development, I think the state of the Empire as a whole greater grounds for concern. With the Emperor slain and Xenos returned, it is impossible to predict how matters will unfold in Garlemald. The Ultima weapon may be but the first of many unpleasant surprises. The situation beareth closer observation, of that there is no doubt, and doth compound our need to return unto the Source. Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianger and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. We set out to create a crystalline container retaining the more useful properties of white aurasite, but without its regrettable limitations. And, after a good deal of trial and error, we made one. An arc for soul and mind both that will allow your incorporeal self in its entirety to be ferried between worlds. A spirit vessel, if you will. However, 
However, though the vessel is possessed of the requisite qualities to hold mind and memory, it wanteth yet for a means to receive of them. For that, we must needs imbue it with the Exarch's innate gift. A gift that lives on only through the blood of the Allegan Emperors, which certainly does not flow within Aurasite or any other crystal. Just so, my lady. The blood serveth as a conduit of sorts. In its absence, memory cannot pass from mind unto mind, nor from flesh unto crystal. That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance, so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. For as well you should be. The Allegan's body of etherological research is extraordinary. I can scarce believe it the work of ages past. But its underlying principles are not so very different from those of my own field of study. Given time, we will find the answers we seek. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home. My apologies. I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. No. I had hoped to speak with the Warrior of Darkness. But there is no need to cut short your meeting on my account. I will be waiting outside. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless... she didn't want to. Perhaps I might accompany you. Though I am woefully ill-qualified to assist in the Exarch's research, I may yet be of some use to Lena. Take the gold. I must confess, while I enjoyed my my fair my fair share, share of scholarly research, it would be good to step outside of the spot for fresh air. Now then, shall we go and speak with Lena? We have little time, but I, I will be brief. The Sydney has been sighted in Lakeland, and I ask that your assistance is slay in it. A Sydney I have heard some few have remained from the night return, but perhaps you could recall, could call the others. That will not be necessary. It's only a single Sydney A simple, simple task for a guard, I should think. That said, I believe fighting alongside the Warrior of Darkness would be a valuable experience for them. Peace can lead to complacency, and they gain nothing but an easy victory. But we do do underestimate our your foes. We, you do not underestimate your foes, however harmless they may seem. My men will do do well to learn for your example. Me? Why not Alpha now? Can't be serious. Come on, this ghost. What could, would be more inspiring than fighting alongside the renowned warrior of darkness himself? Eh. Eh, I guess he could get on me. Excellent. But let us make for a fort job.
If you would wait here a moment, I will gather the others. May may not remember, but we have met this so these soldiers once before, though, only in passing. Long have they waited the opportunity to fight at your side. I was at death's door that day after the city was attacked. If you and yours hadn't come along, I would likely step through, and I wouldn't have been alone. Your courage is selfless, and this is something we all aspire to. I, too, was there that terrible day. My friend was to transformed into a senior before my very eyes, and I had no choice but to cut it down. The thought of returning to the field of holding a blade again filled me with dread. But there is no way to honour her and her comrades, and so I have returned. I swear, I will not let you or anyone else down from this day forward. A pleasure to meet you, sir. Truly, it seems like only yesterday I watched as you took f took flight to ride in a Morrow to go and save the Oracle. Strange to think that you more than soldiers who once locked blades with are now on our side, but we will do our utmost to keep the peace here in Lakeland. We seem to be missing one. My apologies, Captain Lena. An elderly gentleman asked that I escort him to Clearmelt. It took longer than I anticipated. I would not begrudge your desire to help those in need, but a soldier must be punctual, especially when you pay, play host to honored guests. It won't happen again. My name is Thea. Taylor, I'm sure you don't remember, but we, we met once before in the infirmary. I asked you to deliver a message to the Exarch in the Warrior of Darkness. As I know, I was already talking to him. Don't give up. Don't give in. I'll keep those words close to my heart, and the boundless beautiful skies above serve as a reminder of their importance. My friend got to see the knight's return shortly before he passed. He left this, this world with a smile, satisfied with a glimpse of what has, was to come. But there are countless others who weren't so fortunate. They gave their lives for the promise of a future that They'll never know, and so it falls to us to do everything we can to fulfill that promise. No matter what happens, we won't give up. We won't give in. Your heroism has inspired all the our guardsmen in such a much the same manner. The scouts at the northern staging point have not had the pleasure of meeting you in person. Let us not keep them waiting. Did you slay this eater? Your orders were to await the main force before engaging. No, Captain. It wasn't us, I swear it. A man came out of nowhere and cut it down before we knew what was happening. By himself? Certainly it is no light warden, but nevertheless. It's true. Felled it with a single swing of his axe, he did. I've never seen anything like it. So I says to him, Who are you, the warrior of bleeding darkness? And he says, no, I'm a warrior of light. And that was it. Buggered off as quick as he came. 
A warrior of light? Why would someone go around calling himself that, though? It was those bastards who caused the flood. I mean, if you were going to pretend to be anyone, it'd be him, the warrior of darkness. Hey? Oh, oh, I didn't know. It's an honor. Since the Eater is no longer a threat, our work here is done. Return to your posts. I had hoped to fight at your side today. But I'll continue to follow your example, and may we meet again. I apologize for the wasted journey. It seems I overestimated the threat. As for this warrior of light, I do not know who would be brazen enough to take that mantle for his own. Whatever it may once have meant, it is forever tainted by the association with the Flood. The Exarch told me the truth of Ardbert and his comrades' deeds, and I am aware they played some part in your own triumph. But to most, they are synonymous with the calamity that befell this world. Still. If this man is minded to destroy Sin Eaters, I may forgive him his unfortunate choice of alias. But that is neither here nor there. I thank you for accompanying me. With that concluded, shall we return to the Crystarium? There is a proposal I should like to make. Forgive me. There is one more thing. A personal concern of mine. I had hoped you might have a moment to speak privately. Take your time. I shall go on ahead. I will not mince words. This matter concerns the Exarch. Though his countenance belies his age, his demeanor never has. He has seen more than any man should and grown ever more weary with time. But I see I give the wrong impression. While it is true he attempted to open a letter with his salmon fillet the other evening, we are not here because I suspect his mind is deteriorating. Nor do I believe him to be so maddeningly unconcerned by the prospect of his own death as he once was. Indeed, the opposite is true. It is for this reason that I seek your advice. Since he returned from the Tempest, the Exarch is... not as he was. He seems a different man. A younger man. I know not the details of his research, but when I saw him at work recently, there was a glint in his eye that I had never seen before. He looked... happy. It was as if he had peered into the future and for the first time... found joy there. Though it gladdens me to see him thus, I wonder if I should not keep my distance. I fear that my presence will only anchor him to the past, remind him of all the pain that came before. Anchors keep us where we were chosen to be. Is that so? Then perhaps we might remain as we were. As we have always been. What a relief. In that case, I will have to speak with him about the amount of time he is spending at work. This research is important, I know. But if he refuses to consider his own health, 
I will have to consider it for him. Get back to normal stuff. As a warrior of light, uh, who can tell what's normal? We'll see the others back to their posts. Uh, I'm saying that. What is that at the Crystarium, right? Back to the ocular. Others are quite shocked to hear what we found in Lakeland. And now that you're here, there's a proposal I should like to make. I've been spending, spending a great deal of time in the Cabinet of Curiosity, and of late I've noted more and more people pursuing books on his history, the years leading up to the Flood in particular. I suspect they wish to know more about the Warriors of Light as well. Well, they should, but nearly everything I come across describes them as Sin Eaters or worse. Regardless of whether or not this warrior of light is who they can claim to be, I worry that their sudden appearance is conjection, in conjunction with this renewed interest in their predecessors may lead to growing unrest and fear. If the people of the Crystarium seek the truth, I say we give it to them. I too can attest to the fal falsehoods found within many of the cabinet's tomes with nary a mention of the noble deeds of Arbut and his comrades. To be fair, they bear some res responsibility for the Flood, but when the tale is told again and again over the course of the century, it is not surprised to see their roles distorted and them painted as villains. Were it not for the records stored within the t Crystal Tower, I would have had no reason to question the narrative. Unfortunately, that knowledge is of no use. But when I arrived here in the first, their reputation had already been irreparably tarnished. That said, there still remain those who worked tirelessly to defend their good name in those early days following the flood. Defending all the good they have done, I find, considering all the good they have done, I find it a wonder they needed defending at all. They brought to justice the man who misused my knowledge to bring about the fall of Fulbert. That such uh, heroes would be spoken in the same breath as Sin Eaters is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I would agree, but as time passed, those who, first, who knew firsthand of their deeds dwindled. In the end, only one truth remained. They were the cause of the Flood. With the world on the brink of oblivion, it is all, all too easy for the Warriors of Light to become villains deserving only of resentment and hate. At that point, the uh, truth mattered little. It would not change their lot. Thanks to all of you, however, their lot has changed. Now they may heed the long-forgotten truth. You claimed it was Arbor who helped you overcome Emmett Selk, correct? Such a revelation would do, do well to sway the hearts of those who know him only as a villain. I have shared this with the select few, but one on one and all must be told of his sacrifice. In the end, I say we proceeded, proceed with Alphino's plan. We call together the people of the Crystarium and recount to them the true tale of the Warriors of Light and the flood that followed in their wake. Well, what say you, Eskos? 
Make sure you had done this sooner. In hindsight, I agree. But better late than never, no? Exa, may I ask that you continue working with Becklug on a, a means of attending home? The rest of us will see together in the people of the Crystarium and the Exeter. We have to reach out to anyone and everyone who might be willing to lend an ear. With any luck, word will spread and more will accompany them. Turn the south and work our way north. Leonard. Well, well. To what do I owe the pleasure? Whatever it is, I must ask that you be brief with the night returned. Wizards have been flocking to the Crystarium, and I find myself too busy by half. Don't mind it, though, seeing the stairs so full of life and excitement. One can almost forget the flood ever happened. Hey, speaking of the flood. Warriors of Light. Yes, the Exarch has mentioned them before, but everyone knows them as the Cardinal Virtues. Are you suggesting there's more to that than them? No. Well, you've yet to steer us wrong, so I'm willing to hear what you have to say. Come to browse the wares as the market tells you. Well, I can guarantee you'll have no trouble finding what you need, whatever it may be. And the Yormo's new leadership trade has never been more prosperous. Where is that fellow from Daedalus Stonework that's taken over as mayor? Did he really? Little wonder business is booming the way it is. I imagine it won't be long before all of Norvrent reaps the benefits. Well, you've not come to talk about the market. Something on your mind? Yeah, we're going to talk about the warrior's flight. I see, the Exarch did mention that you, they had something to do with the returning of the night to Northrend. All right, consider my interest peaked. It's a meal. Let's go. What a wonderful surprise. Though I hope you're being here doesn't mean someone's been hurt. Thanks to you, I've had far fewer patrons coming through my door of late, which is a shame, come to think of it. Glad for your opportunities to test my new medicines. Hee <laughs> hee, I just, of course. It's actually been quite pleasant to have a few moments to myself now and again. Truth about the warriors of light, but the Exarch has already spoken with me about them. Well, if there's more to the tale, I'd much like to hear it. We're downstairs. Go upstairs. No, it can't be. Surely there's at least one book here that does not cast the warriors of light and their deeds in a negative light. Hey, uh, you want me to tell you a tale? 
Ah, this goes. Forgive me, the cabinet of curiosity has been bustling with visitors late, but if you are a repository, it lacks the knowledge they seek. The people wish to know the truth of the flood of the warriors of light. I have searched high and low, but alas, every account portrays them as no better than the sin eaters. Abominations worthy only of scorn and resentment. I know they are not always judged so harshly, yet I f find no proof, and I dare call myself a librarian. Eh, it's all right. Would you address the people and tell them the truth of the warriors of light, of the blood? How oh, wonderful. You have regaled me with the tale once before, but I should love to hear it again. Oh, and you may be assured I will not come alone. Well, well, what a coincidence. I was just reading over a letter I received from Grenold. Well, to not long ago. He says a visitor of the Crystarium found him at the bottom of the ocean and that he, inspi that he inspired him to reach new artistic heights. Well, I can only think of one person capable of both... No, I'd say the let letter is far more impressive. To think fate could bring the two of you together in such a place. Speaking of which... I'm sorry, you mean the Exarch didn't tell us the whole story of the Warriors of Light? Well, whatever he's left unsaid, I'm all ears. <sighs> Why am I yawning? There you are. Between the four of us, I dare say we swept the Crystarium from top to bottom. Now we need but wait for the people to gather. Yes, sir. Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honor should fall to you. What? They uh, would be more inclined to take the word of the warrior of darkness. Uh, Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths? Uh, okay. Uh. Uh. Hi. Let me tell you about our Bert and company. They were there when the flood stopped. If I, I'm at Selk, it was Arbert who helped me finish him off. Make it white. The warriors of light did all that. So they never. I mean, they only ever wanted to help. And when everything they'd done turned to ash, they still carried on. Everything to stop the flood. First their lives, then their souls. And they managed it too. In the end, they saved us. And we cursed their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air.
Wait a minute. Hold on. What's that? Our Bert. You can see him too. I definitely see something. You don't think it's a ghost, do you? Nay. Yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, but a warrior of light and darkness both. Albert. What in the world? It's you, the one who slew the eater. That it should be the warrior of darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time, though I have a few words of my own to say, if I may. People of the Crystarium, I am Ardbert. One of those you know as a warrior of light. That's impossible. You should be dead. Aye, that I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. I know not why I and I alone have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when he must return to his home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, it is we who must protect it. The time to rely on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. What? Us. None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate. And by thy countenance, I gather thou art not inclined to recant thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. Twere better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Go, I will stay here and watch. So, that is a warrior of light of the first. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. 
As far as I was able to discern, that was indeed Artbert. It has been a long time, but not that long. Could he truly have been resurrected as he claimed? Looks like him and sounds like him, but it isn't him. Arbert did entrust his very soul unto thee. I see no reason to question thy judgment. Nor I. To my eyes, your ether burns as brightly as the day you slew Emmett Selk. That is proof that he is with you still. Yet that which standeth now before the people is far more than a passing imitation. I am reminded of the cardinal virtues, though a sin eater he is not. Which leaveth but one plausible explanation. That he is an Asian. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulmor by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the Virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Assuming then that this is indeed the work of an Asian, my mind inevitably turns to the last remaining paragon to survive the Sundering. Elidibus. That Xenos hath reclaimed his own flesh is known. Thus evicted from his borrowed form and cognizant no doubt of Emmet Selk's failure here in the first, tis quite possible the emissary chose Ardbert for his next vessel. Inhabiting the flesh of the fallen. Why, that is unsavory. And they do this often, you say? Verily, for they possess no corporeal forms of their own. In what one may term their natural state, none save those gifted with the echo can perceive them. Indeed, when Elidibus intruded upon the waking sands, his presence did go unmarked by all save Nymphilia and the Warrior of Light. On that occasion, I myself remained ignorant of his coming until after his departure. It was only at a later juncture, when he deigned to appear before me in borrowed flesh, that I was finally able to take the measure of him. In such puppetry do the Asians engage when they seek to influence the course of history. And they have gained much by it. Emmet Selk single-handedly built the Galian Empire in this manner, while the Hebrea came close to conquering Eorzea, having taken possession of Thancred's living body. Yet it must needs be noted that the Asians cannot avail themselves of all mortal vessels. For were they able to do so, none would serve as a better pawn than our own redoubtable champion. Mayhap the blessing of light shieldeth Hydlin's chosen from Asian influence. Or mayhap other forces are at work. We cannot say for certain. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Is it not peculiar, then, that Ardbert's mortal remains should be susceptible, given that he was once a warrior of light? Or did the final departure of his soul make it possible, perhaps? Regardless, to hear an Asian use him to call forth new warriors of light boggles the mind. Elidibus hath ever been an enigma, his ostensible purpose being to preserve the balance between light and dark. When he made overtures towards me, however, I was afforded a glimpse behind the mask of the self-appointed emissary. I shall not defend mine actions, undertaken in pursuit of a better understanding of our foe as either wise or prudent. Nevertheless, 
what little I did glean may now prove useful. Elidibus possesseth a subtle mind, practiced in the art of manipulation. That he coax this star's most valiant heroes as far as the source with naught save half-truths is no trifling feat. And now I believe he doth employ his skills once more to some as yet unknown end. Though naught is certain, should my suspicions prove true, we shall have need of all our wits if we are to uncover and thereafter thwart his plot. Agreed. Tis plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements, as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. His performance appears to have concluded. What now? Go back out and follow him? It would appear Master Alphino already hath pursuit in mind, and I suspect one pair of eyes shall better serve our cause than half a dozen. Let the rest of us maintain an inconspicuous distance, for the present at least. Oh, Litibus. Nope. Got to turn up the volume for that. That's all right. I'm getting old. I'm forgetting anything. I uh, did well to dispel the falsehoods surrounding the warrior's light and their actions prior to the flood. Though I must say the appearance of Arbert, or one who appropriated his identity, rather curious development. He's an imposter, of that is no doubt, but in the masses he will appear as a hero returned from the grave. After the warriors of light had laid to rest in Yulmor, the people prayed fervently for the gods to deliver them from their plight, prayed that these fallen heroes be born again for their sacrifice. The irony. I, for one, would like to know why Arbert uh, urged the people to become warriors of light themselves. Ere we take action, we must needs ascertain his intent. Let us pray that Master Alphino returneth soon with the, that most essential mold. For now, I think it best who prays Thancred and Breen of our, our efforts. When we do confront Arbert, we shall no doubt have need of their strength. Agreed. I think it's prudent we all take measures to prepare for what is to come. Backlog and I will continue our research into how we might improve the spirit vessel that I might one day carry you home. Hmm. And I think it's time I return to the Great Wood. Until now, everything we have learned from the Asians have been handed to us in the leisure. There are some... That was one of Emmet Selk's unique failings. I have no reason to think Lydibus will be as forthcoming. Fortunately, I've recently received word from Fanal that therefore unexplored chambers have been discovered deep within the ravel. Elmit believes the relics within tell of a great calamity that befell an ancient civilization, that of the Asins, perhaps. They may lead us to the truth we seek. Here yeah. lies now how that works out. I failed to see why that would be necessary, given that you will be accompanying me. Don't be coy. No, uh, it's not what I want. Okay. When you're ready, make for final. Our mother and sisters have been expecting. Will be expecting us. Then let us be at our tasks. Pray give us, uh, give, 
in my regards to the bees. No, seriously, as ghost would be like, uh, no, it, uh. Esco's likes punchy things in the face. No. Oh. Or direct. Or, I don't know. <sighs> you mean? Nicole Malas, Vranka, you have accomplished much since last we came. With the light warden dead and their minions dispersed, we are at least reclaimed our hunt at last reclaimed our hunting grounds near Rectika Falls. It was there that we discovered more ruins, though we ran foul of no traps. While exploring its halls, we determined that the innermost chambers were awarded by magic. We all were in agreement before any investigation could proceed, we would you should be summoned. We would be grateful that you did. From what you have told me, I strongly suspect that the wisdom my comrades and I seek can be found within. This wisdom could prove invaluable, for we soon face a foe whose greatest asset is our ignorance. I see that it's best that you, you have come, for Ronka was once home to the greatest of weapons in its knowledge and understanding. It is our duty to ensure you and yours do not want for either. That said, we must proceed with caution. To have reached the inner chambers unmolested suggests a more formidable det detriment yet lies within. Come now, surely any threat sleeping within the ruins pale in comparison to those we have faced thus far. It is not a game, sister. We should not be so eager to run headlong into danger. Oh, and who is it pining for the return of our allies who might venture into the ruin, clutching your staff at night, wishing we were... Ugh, you promised not to tell! I'm trying to get the accent right, because I'm basing it off of Lena. Then I suggest we go. We get going. Get back here! Remind me, exactly how old are you and your sisters? I think I cannot thought, perhaps, but I better not do not know. Or forgive my their overzealous nature. None save we three have been privileged to escort you and yours into the ruin and bear witness to its secrets. Their hearts now burn with curiosity it is not easily satiated. Please, you needn't apologize. As a seeker of knowledge myself, I understand full well their enthusiasm. If not for the, your the deal is a schedule. Sedulous. 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 If not for your sedulous. The efforts to protect the ruins, we would not be afforded this opportunity. Speaking of which, I believe I have kept you away from the ruins long enough. Oh, come, let us make for the Kitana arrival. It's most strange that these halls be left unguarded. Have Ketter wouldn't break in the seal in the chamber door. Danger surely waits, waits us on the other side. 
Booty, it's recommended you set aside significant time to view these scenes in their entirety. Booty! Our new discoveries are to be found this way. New discoveries found this way. I'm doing the uh, accent all wrong. Turn the volume. The volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Dance, dance. The people of Ronka are known to have venerated animals, but these features do not match those of any indigenous species. This is no common beast. Though that much is plain from its proportions. Lifelike, is it not? One could almost imagine it breathed. This owl, by contrast, seems no different from the others we've seen. The sealed door lies ahead. They fight this entire, entire time in stiletto heels. As you see, one statue is missing. I expect we are meant to replace it as before. Too simple. There will be some additional defense mechanism. Just a moment. There are words carved into the stone. He who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber shall instead waken the beast and know his folly. Wait! Don't! What? But I only... What is happening? Why am I not surprised? Prepare yourselves!
You trespass mortal upon sacred gowns in retribution for souls I have I bound. Yet two heroes proven, learned, and wise, a comrade's soul shall be your prize. If you would see these, there's set free, answer me, brittle three. Deft to paw with kin do I vie through salt apart, betterment whole enough. Let's decry what am I? This is the uh, opa opa. Indeed, the opa opa is keen and shrewd. The spirit of ingenuity by those. Maybe by those gods did it and prosperity pursue. Riddle answer you did discern and thus you you were so With the fearsome fang I travel with the pack. Together we find harmony thus our land not black. But am I? Was the spirit of the wolf doctor prays that they would know of peace and harmony. Mm, to the end of their days, the riddles answer you did discern, and thus you were solved. On my belly do I crawl, by my strength as prosperity. <laughs> what am I? Open. Indeed, the Dread Serpent turned protector lured to some slumber ere it tear this. The riddle I see did discern, and thus to you a soul returns. Desire you th that which I yet claim, then we shall end up play another game. A test of mind and memory, use wisely all may. Yet to go free. To exist talismans, hide friend or foe, choose your companions well. Comrades are assembled together at last. Yet still there remains one trial you must. If you would glean the knowledge you tried to uh, I would take measure of. And with the of she who the wrong can stop. Yeah. 
Now this is more like it. Fought here, the trial complete. The way is open, thou. I Thus, I can see. It would seem the magics have returned us. How polite. Now, what have we learned? Ah, we were bound to run into a living statue eventually. And now we can open the door. Who would disturb a hero's deserved slumber?
A tomb, just as I thought, befitting a hero. She is Vis. Could that be the Archmage Tiuna? A legendary hero of Ronka, as you surmised. The tales tell of how she smote entire armies with a single incantation, so potent was her spellcraft. Though she ever fought in the name of peace. I thought them no more than tales. To think she really existed. Well, I for one always believed. I wonder... By the light of fallen stars, great power awakens. Tuna was not only a master of spellcraft. It is said she could see truths long lost and hear the voices of men's hearts. Not less than the Echo, in which case None of this is mere coincidence. A shower of stars setting the sky aflame. And in both this world and the Source, we find individuals within whom a mysterious power awakened at the sight. We can never unpick the why of it. Now, however, I believe we might. Does the scene depicted here not resemble the one we saw when we first ventured into the Katana Ravel. Moreover, does it not recall that which Emmett Selk invited us to witness in Amarot? The final days. If, as the Exarch's research suggests, Soul and mind share a fragile yet profound bond. Might it not be possible for an event to leave such a deep imprint upon the soul that it could be perceived eons later, given a suitable trigger? The Echo defies explanation by conventional etherological theory, or shall we say modern etherological theory, but if it is a power that once belonged to the ancients, to souls yet undivided, It would seem I have entered the realm of pure speculation, and I call myself a scholar. I shall refrain from making any further wild claims until such time as I have evidence. Still, I cannot choose but be reminded of our experience in Amarot. Not soon forget it. Remember us. History is learned, not lived. We have always protected the tales of Ronka, just as we have protected this place. But we are mindful of what our mothers taught us. We see the past through our own eyes and speak of it with our own words. Thus do we come to understand it in our own way. But this is not the same as remembering. Your mothers were wise. Though we witnessed the final days, our impressions could not fail to be colored by our own experiences and expectations. Those who lived through it would have perceived the event quite differently. We must bear in mind that it is no simple matter to keep the truth alive, or it will die with Emmett Selk and his kin. But we have disturbed Tuna long enough. 
Fana will serve similarly well as a venue for our contemplations. By your pensive expression, I take it the tomb has given you much to think about. That is well in, well, in time the knowledge you have gleaned will lead, lead to understanding and thus arm you with what is to come. Before you leave, however, I would speak again of the teachings of our forebears. If history is learned, not lived. The legend of Tiona and her exploits have been long told countless times over the centuries, yet it is handed from one generation to the next story changes. With each telling of the tale, there is new flourishes. Details change from lost. We can never truly know how she lived, for we are not there to see it. But we are here now to bear witness to your life. We've seen the change you have wrought, the, the echoes that will endure long after you've gone. And though it too will change in time, I swear to you, we shall do our best to preserve your story. I hope you forgive me if we don't make an oath of, our, of my own. But I think it does goes without saying we've never misspeak of your heroism. Perish the thought. So long are we here that, that, that there are none among the Vies who will not do that though all you have done for Norvind. We are not deserving of such reverence, but you are grateful all the same. You may be certain we will have our own tales to tell the great guardians of Fractica and the ruins of Franca. I pray you safe tra travels then. As ever, we shall await your return with open arms. Although we learned not of the Asians, the insight we gained into the Echo made our trip worthwhile. Before we return to the Crustalian, however, there is a small matter I would attend to and slith about. Might I trouble you to come with me? Thank you. After we arrive, we should have a brief word with Runa. I'm keeping the volume up just in case we get some more voiceover. <laughs> Voice acting. I think I've gotten the Faroth card down. I think. Maybe not the greatest, but I think I got their, their, their intonations there. It's a good sight. It's so good to see you. You've arrived at the most opportune time. I was preparing a part of my famous stool. Come, I will be ready a place for you. I'm sorry, Renal, but we haven't the... Please, I insist. It will only take a minute. Ah, my apologies, Askos. It seems our return to the Crystarium will be delayed. But perhaps only for a bit, if you'll assist me with my work. I say work, but it's rather more of a chore. I must clean my chambers here in the slip about from top to bottom. You'd be so kind to go fetch a broom from me. Rescue we might finish before Runa is done cooking. Ah, uh, broom for Master Matoya. I cannot imagine why we she would need such a thing, but here you are. It is old but sturdy and short as this one. I trust Seiskar and was able to find a broom for us. Well, what? Well, good. This will pro prove difficult otherwise. Though I must say, I think I'd rather. They did rather well of not having a broom thus far. Hmm? 
Well, well, you haven't buried... You weren't buried beneath half a venerable avalanche of bullets when you entered, were you? Right. Anyway, it's time that I finish cleaning the dog with that broom. I thought you were going to use the burn. You didn't honestly think I would do it the old-fashioned way. That broom is more than capable of sweeping by itself. Rather, it will be. <clears throat> Time to rise to swish and sweep. Lady chamber you must keep. With this task you shall be bound, held no dust to be found. This is one particular respect, I have no objections to following the master of Victoria's footsteps. In the future, I may need you to remind me that the pursuit of knowledge does not preclude some equally important duties, such as maintaining clean quarters for said pursuit. Ah, I will dearly miss this place, these people. Number. No, Master Matoya, pardon the interruption, but the stew is ready. I'll chit chat. Runar is sulking. Is he overheard? Something troubling you? Been rather quiet. Oh. No, everything is fine, I assure you. It's been a long day. I see. You're still there. Thank goodness you're still here. Well, for now, I thought you were following the but. I was, though I'd say, I'd say to, I'm sad to say I lost track of him shortly after entering these woods. He seemed determined to traverse every ilm of Northrend in his quest to spread the truth of the warrior's light in the flood. And it seems news of your address at the Crystarium precedes him at every destination, making his task all the more simple. It seems to be remains to be seen as to what end he encourages the people to become warriors of light himself. But there is no denying that his words have struck a chord with many. Well, we've all agreed that this is just another Asian ploy, yes. We've commandeered corpses before and it's been to no good end and I've no reason to think this time is any different, especially when it it's that of a fallen warrior's light. That we'll learn more if we remain a step behind. His next destination is in all likelihood Slitherbow. What do you say? Are you certain you should be here? If if we're concerned about Halric and the others, you needn't be. The treatment is going well, but progress is slow and exhausting for all of us. The best thing I can do now is let them rest. Well, I believe we are about to discuss how to arrange a meeting with our would-be warrior of light. Before visiting any towns or villages, Arbert would hunt down and slay a nearby sin eater to earn the locals' trust. The best chance of getting ahead of him is to find one before he does. Thankfully, Zancred and Reen have returned from the empty and have taken up the search. 
Being believeth one may lurk beneath the boughs of woven oath. And there is where we will start our search. That's the Matoya! A, a warm boiled stool will be waiting you. I look forward to it. Oh, oh Renard. If you are hoping to vent your frustrations on our Eater friend here, I can only apologize. Few as they are now, it took us no time at all to track it down. That suits our purpose perfectly. Now we need to only wait for Ardbert to arrive. Weren't you two meant to be attending to the empty? We were, and are, but we can hardly ignore the rest of the world, so we thought we might see how things were coming along. From what we can gather, the answer is strangely. Right now, we think we can do more good here. It is heartening to have all present. Indeed. We will be glad of the additional hands should matters escalate. Our quarry is come. It seems I've lost this particular race. Although I suppose it's only fair. When we first met, it was I who outpaced you. Ravana, was it? <laughs> but where are my manners? I wouldn't be here were it not for you, and I have yet to say a word of thanks. No, no, no. Eskos wants to punch him in the face. Arm giving you trouble? You should have it examined. What I really want to do is punch him in the face. Now you were supposed to be good at this. Very well. Let us forego this pretense. After all, it was never you that I needed to deceive. Yes, it is I, Elizabeth. Through your time in Emmet Selk's imitation of our home, I dare say you have gained a better understanding of my role since last we met. Not that it matters. We understand your role, Emissary, but not your goal. What is it that you seek to achieve? I seek to enact the will 
of the Convocation, of course. If it helps you to think of me as but another Asian, no different in nature or purpose from the rest, you are welcome to do so. Once, I would have said your goal was destruction alone. Now I understand that you fight for something you love, just as we do. Yet though we seem doomed to clash, I bid you consider Emmett Selk's final words. Remember that we once lived, he said. Had he not seen some glimmer of hope in our kind, I do not believe he would have spoken thus. None better understood your plight than he. His words must surely be worthy of your consideration. Emmet Selk. How very unlike you to err so gravely. That one should stray at the end of so onerous a path is understandable, but I had thought you above such weakness. Mayhap you thought the same. Would that I had been present to offer correction. But I shall do so now, as is my duty, and return all to its proper course. As for you, Look at yourselves. Look at your history. Look back one hundred short years to how your greatest warriors were undone. And now, at but a word from me, you raise your hands in answer like the puppets you are. Naught has changed. You fail and you fail and you learn nothing. Allow that which is most important to slip through your fumbling fingers like so many grains of sand, again and again and again, and you would remember us. You do forget yourselves. There is no common ground to be found between you and I nor do I require any. I have my duty. Wait! Well, we have confirmed the identity of our foe, at least. And tis safe to say his objective is the rejoining. But we still have no idea how playing the part of a warrior of light will further his cause, nor why he would spur others to do the same. Another visit to the Tempest may shed some light upon these mysteries. Whether we are to exchange words or blows with Elidibus at our next meeting, the fact remains, we know too little. Ere our paths cross again, I would learn more of the world that once was, and of Elidibus himself. In this, we would be best served going directly to his home, much as Emmet Selk came to ours. Though I see the wisdom in thy suggestion, the Amorot we visited is but a phantom born of Emmet Selk's memory. I fear it will teach us little that we do not already know. I quite agree. Yet the ruins of the actual city remain unexplored. Given the vastness of the Tempest, I should not be surprised were there more such structures like to those in which the Ondo reside. As long as you don't make me do any more chores. Keep that up and I'll send you to bed without supper. <laughs> yes, mother.
Assuming we are all in agreement, then I suggest we first pay a visit to the Ondo. If anyone can tell us where more ruins are to be found, it is them. <laughs> and the music stopped. The music stopped. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't choose that option last time, I don't think. <laughs> Alagos is more amenable to stuff, as it goes not so much. Now, yeah, Warriors of Light, bro. Uh, you know... Don't get it, dude. I was hoping the friendly fist was I'd punch him in the face. Half an hour is the right of it. Let us pay a visit to the Ondo. We should speak with uh, Tolsh Ath. Tolsh Ath. Tolsh Ath. That is it. As the <laughs> chief did he stop this purview to strike many secrets. Alright, the Ondo Cups. <laughs> You heard that too, right? I said, as, as long as you don't do any, don't make me do any more chores. And then the music stopped. Yastrola looks at me for a little bit and then hits me back with another one liner. <laughs> and there's just pause. There's just no music. And then Alpha No talks and the music resumes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I sent for your friendly ones. Perhaps you instead come seeking something, Bremer. This is how I prepare. Exposition. Rules which your kind has yet to explore, I see. I know of one such place as that under these circumstances, I'm afraid we can spare none to guide you there. In what circumstances oh Hola. <laughs> what circumstances are these? Other than hunt for their own meals, the benthos have pri pillaged our shores of mere liver. They may be replenished they must be replenished with haste. The benthos, particularly violent tribe of Ondo, if I recall. Band of bottom feeders, they all lost lost much in the flood, but while others work to rebuild, they resort to thievery and murder. Revenge, you caught. Prey upon your kind, but, but do not be fooled. They care not who they harm. Would that they have the warriors to challenge them. This is not the first time they have swollen from us, but there is no resource more precious than liver. They all must dedicate themselves to the hunt. And this, of course, so we have to claim the livers for you. It would seem a fitting payment for vital information, does it not? Moreover, one could argue that, that by employing Bismarck to re reach these depths, uh, thereby driving back the waters, we are part responsible for the deeds of these driven to desperate ends by the changing climbs. We're not simply hunt. Uh, yeah, can we not simply hunt or ourselves? We might, but that wouldn't discourage the Benthos, uh, Benthos from stealing from the Ondo again. That would it. Claiming the source it is, then. <laughs> we can me do chores, mother. We'd be grateful of beyond words if we did. The Bentos are surely take the livers back to the flounder store, but be warned that there is no shortage of guards waiting to spear intruders. Oh, I get a bunch of things in the face? Ah, sure. And we'll have to uh, care not to draw their attention, shall we?
tum, tum, tum. Oh, man. Also, Yoshi Soken is brilliant. He's a Russell Brower of uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, at some point, Russell Brower got kind of quote unquote demoted. From the squelching noise they make when prodded in the vile stench, you conclude these bags are bursting with livers. Brilliant. Right, um, there's them. Perhaps you deduce this already, but it seems the Benthos have been kind of raiding collusion storehouses, as well as those of the Ondo. Orange, oranges, pumpkins, wheat. But we can discuss this after we see the liver safely back to Olshas. It wouldn't be due to keep him in suspense. And by the way, I did have to Google search to figure out his first, uh, uh, his first name. Where is it? His given name, it would say. Because in Japanese, he would be called Soken Masayoshi. They do it the reverse. So, like, I would be Anderson Jeffrey. Anyways, the side of the point. I believe to see you unspeared. Uh, here's your levers. Let me just pull these out of my hammer space. <laughs> Our precious livers, I knew you would not fail. We also found old manner of food stuff from Calusia on the, on the fl flounder's floor. Tell me, Tolshas, it does that seem odd to you? It is raisin, to be sure. I'm reminded of rumors I've heard recently concerning a rash of thefts from Calusian warehouse. Perpetrators enter in the dead of night and are gone before anyone has realized what has happened. The Mullen army has been investigating, and thus far, to no avail. Perhaps the reason they have struggled is that their quarry is of the sea. The true question, then, is what we mean to do about it. Much as I would like to proceed to the ruins without further delay, we cannot allow the Bentos... Do carry on as they are. If I may, I believe that, that the ruins are, in fact, key to the Benthos plan. Is that so? These ruins, which lie deep within the illuminated land, are a recent discovery. They have seen signs that the Benthos is preparing to claim them with all haste. I cannot fathom why, but in light of the knowledge that they have been stockpiling resources. It is clear that their queen will soon give birth. They require space to raise their young and food for both queen and, and hatching to thrive. Well, we can hardly fault them for that. When the local 
circumstances, perhaps, but conditions in the Tempest are probably suitable for spawning. This resource is barely able to sustain our current population. There's only one reason they would disregard this. We need to build an army, and with it, take revenge upon the Findus. It's not a surprise they come to us not long ago, seeking allies for the cause. We were rubbed them, of course. The suffering others will not serve as a balm to their own. The queen, however, de desires only bloodshed and will gladly send her children to die in her are dead. They are planning to wave war. That, that changes matters considerably. Indeed. I doubt this will be resolved without violence, but perhaps with a show of force we can convince them to see reason before the die is cast. I would rather not risk your people in the attempt. If you travel through the illuminated land, there is a way we might identify the ruins ourselves. Yes. Once you reach its steps, you go deeper still. You will see a mountainous, monstrous structure there upon the sea floor. That you have come to us now is the will of the ancient ones. They have guided you here, then you may drive up out the usurper, those who seek to use their magnificent creations with vile purpose. I have no doubt that they will show you the way forward. I'm afraid that the dead do not speak quite so clearly. Nonetheless, we shall try not to disappoint. If what we seek lies deep below, beyond Amarot, we shall call upon the assistance of another. No, our course hath been decided to pursue to it. We must needs beseech the aid of a friend. I, I speak of Bismarck. Pray follow me to Sullen that we might seek an audience with him once more. It is faster to double port. From here we press onward to the Isle of Ken. I myself shall proceed on foot. You perfected your technique then? Just so, the water will be as glass beneath my feet. 
Findeth purchase fragile yet true. Watch closely. Oh, I certainly shall. Forgive me, but would it not be easier to, to perfect your swimming technique? Why? It would be, be, be a pity if you drowned. Truly. Oh, hush. I'm sure it'll be brilliant. <laughs> I'm like, good luck! He's done it! Incredible. Oriange, for the love of. <laughs> uh, perhaps a boat. And apologies. The technique requires the purest of focus, and mine was lacking. To perfect this magic, I w went so far as to deal with the froth. And with their aid, mine efforts finally met with success. Debate on a single occasion. I know not why I cannot repeat it. I thought I saw you wa wavering a bit before, toward the end there. Perhaps you are simply tired. Tancred. There's nothing to worry about. Only a dizzy spell, though it may not be wise to, to go for another swim just now. Thankfully, we have an alternative. A wonderful little adventure, I'm certain you'll agree. A boat. <laughs> I mean, I could just call my y'all and I'll be right over there. I mean, <laughs> I will petition Bismarck Aid on our behalf. Let us pray my diplomacy pr proveth more effective than mine experimental metrics. You speak with the voice of the king, little neighbors. I will not deny you. But before, refuse to seek what de sleeps beneath the sea. Right. Thy kindness is as boundless as the depths, three one. Before we depart, however, I would ask a favor. After our last flight, I found many creatures clinging to me. Itchy. Remove them, and I will take you below. With all haste shall it be done. So, did he agree? Aye, though I, I agreed to a favor in kind. Regrettably, it is not one I possess the power to grant. Bismarck hath asked us to cleanse his underbelly of barnacles. Alas, one must needs dive below the surface to do so. Even if I could master the power to walk upon it, it would avail me not. Oh, for heaven's sake, sat all? Essekos and I are more than capable of that. With the coach's blessing, we'll have done, done with it in moments, and better that... 
that then standing here and listening to this nonsense. I'll take the right, you take the left. Now go. Uh, yeah, only <laughs> say okay. I am in your debt. Good, or sure, a good deal of pride from various angles. You dislodged the barnacle. My efforts are most sincerely appreciated. I will inform business that we may depart without further delay. Much, much better. Thank you, neighbors. I remember a long time ago another did this favor for me. After the flood, when I chose a spot for my slumber, he came and made a home on my back. And name. When I grew rich, he had st I stirred, but he was not afraid. No, he asked me what was wrong. I told him of the creatures clinging to my belly. He dove into the water. He helped me, my friend. He told me he wished to live in peace, away from his people and their wars. This I understood. I treasured our time together, brief though it was, brief though it always is. But I remember him, and how he laughed when we flew. I remember when he slept, I too slept that day, any day since. But the light fades and the darkness returns, and sleeps. But a memory he laughs, and together we fly. And I am here, I am awake. Feels good to speak, be heard again. Same others cannot understand me. If thou art willing to learn, I'd gladly teach thee the language of man. Thank you, little friend. But it is time I grant you your quest. But first... I will take flight to cleanse my body and prepare. The dive will be swift, and I would not have you struck by air debris. So this island was named for a man. How easily the past is forgotten. He passed not... Even 100 years ago, yet the truth has slipped from history, like so many grains of sand. Might I have some explanation as to what he just said, or shall we all stand around making vague and mysterious illusions? While he make it, maketh ready to deli deliver us into our destination, Bismarck bade us wait for him on the shore of Clusia. That is all. I feel as though there is more to it. Indeed there was, but it has no bearing on the task at hand. He would be glad to share the rest with you and on. Fine. Later then. <laughs> I 
Miss Mark requires time to prepare. Might I suggest a short respite for Orionji and Thancred in particular? Require no such thing. I'm the p picture of perfect health. Mine was but a momentary lapse in concentration. Worry not on my account. You mustn't push yourself so. Please rest for me. <laughs> Happy dog eyes. Oh, all right, if you insist. You two Essicos, you've been running yourself ragged. I feel fine. Just go quietly, Essicos. Trust me. <laughs> oh, well, right. In that case, I leave the old men in your care. The rest of us will meet you at the Split all the non. <laughs> ah, what advice. Never let it show. When she realizes she struck a nerve, she remembers. By the god she remembers. In any case, we must must get some rest. I know a place in Southern is better better for it than most. Let me. Yeah, we'll do a three-hour stream. May as well have a seat. We won't ha want our elderly knees to give out. You hear us speak, you think we... I I'm on my deathbed by the twelve. I wish that girl wouldn't worry so much. Thy countenance belies thy words, Master Tancred. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Let the record show that I'm here under protest. No, I can't say it, mind the view. Even if the abundance of anglers and any indication, even an amateur, might land an impressive catch. Shall we try our hands at it? Help! Someone! <laughs> Quickly! It's Nightshade! He was a... We are attacked on the road from the Crystarium, barely escaped with me life. Those who might have predicted this. You mean your help for free? Thank you. I recalled Nightshade as the local band of outlaws. No doubt they'd trouble trouble us over much, no more than I've already have had by interrupting our relaxation at it. You had to come this far into Solon? Hmm. Seems to have matters well in hand by the looks of it. Well, not forget this kindness. May we meet again. Hi. Is that you, sir? Don't tell me you, but you, we just deprived the poor fellow the honor of being rescued by the warrior of darkness. We have no idea we were in the area. No, fancy us meeting you, you again so soon, eh? Why, I believe I even recognize your companion. <laughs> oh, yes, from the infirmary. You have a message from the, of the Crystal Axe, did you not? Good to see you back on your feet. I'm patrolled with that. 
No, it's nothing as, as official as that. Strictly speaking, we're off duty, but as we had a free moment, we thought we'd give a, a few of the less traveled roads a look. The guard doesn't have enough hands to patrol them regularly, you see. That's admirable. There are few, few so devoted to their duty, Eklund or beyond. Well, we've been talking about it for a while. Neither of us is satisfied with just seeing out our service. Feels like we were just doing more. Feels like we could be doing more. Like we should be doing more. It's all about having the will to help your fellow men and the resolve to see it through. Oh, I remember you, the excitable one. Oh, so I got a bit, bit overexcited the other day. Couldn't get my words out. My name's Ronald, sir. I'm with the guard, but I don't don't just want to, to protect Legoland. I want to protect the lot. Just like the world use of light. Sadly, our duties prevent us from venturing too far from our little corner of Norfront. What we'd really like to do is travel. Better ourselves. To go where the need is greatest. But someone has to start somewhere, don't they? For now, if we can stop Nightshade from robbing the old fishermen, then that's what we'll do. Oh well. The future heroes of the first, do you think? They want not for spirit, it is but a pity they drew inspiration from so clouded a wellspring. Yet it availeth not to fret in idleness. We must press on. We are to bring a little bit of schemes to light. Probably meld my gear. No, well, our respite is cut short. I dare say we are all eager to avail ourselves of such knowledge as the runes may hold. Aye, and I doubt further contemplation of Elidibus machinations will be conducive to relaxation. We may as well make for the split hole now. I think each of these, I think of each of these as, as being taking, taking three hours to, to do each of these patches, which means I'm going to be done pretty soon. So what do I do? Well, I think I'll switch over to job questing. Although present, now we need but wait. Bismarck's coming. It's time. Pray make ready. All right. I'm going to do a quick check here. I want to do something here. Hmm. I 
I want to do this for the Marine. Here we go. Our fates are not yet sealed. Okay. You need what, 440? Okay, I don't think I can, can do this, so I'm going to have to... Actually, hold on. I'm going to do it. I spent a boatload of money. All right, I don't need to worry about weapon. I need... Five oh six item low. There you go. Pro tip if you have the gill, when you get to max level, you can get a bunch of crafted gear. It's even better is if you
is if you get your crafters up to level 80, make your Are not yet the the old man in reed. Nice variety. To the depths. Maybe it was Bismarck with whom I ought to have bargained. These are poor neighbors indeed. Holy Orch. Time has come to part these interlopes. The walls fall, we must hurry. We are fortunate that this is all
probably torch. It's a little trash, which they come to us instead of we go to them. There it lies. I give you my breath. No wishes granted, O oh, little wanderers. Deepest card to great one. Thank you, Bismarck. The unknown. Ah, he ruined my combo. Uh, four fifty fives.
do all right. Prepare yourself! Channeling the ether through the crystal. <clears throat>
Ah! I shall protect thee. Uh. Can't wait, guys. I must be getting a bunch of lag. I get fending and healing, that's all I'm getting. Come on, give me casting, or at least. Although I don't need casting, because I know I've got all these. Anyways.
This is a weird one. If I remember this correctly. He plans to fight us herself. I made a bad decision. I shall protect thee.
Oh. Do 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 do. I got a history roll, and I got a uh, aiming thing. All right. This structure must have served an important function. And here are yet more crystals. I too noted the crystal repository on the way. The Benthos seem to employ them in their spellcasting. In such vessels did the ancients preserve concepts. Ideal forms to be drawn upon in the act of creation. That so great an abundance should reside here lendeth credence to Ishtola's conclusion. This facility held great significance. for all joining us at Ender. I'm calling it Ender. 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 In these perilous times, by the summoning of Zodiac have we been granted a reprieve, yet immutable as, his, as the laws he has woven may seem, they will not serve to forestall our doom. Nay, should we continue down this path, our fate will be the same. I said as much to the convocation, of course, but the stubborn fools turned a deaf ear to my warnings. I had hoped that the defector, at least, would side with us, but I regret to report our overtures had gone unanswered. Whither tend our thoughts, Vanette? Whither tend your thoughts, Vanette? Were where you lead, we will follow. I shall not speak ill of the Convocation. They too seek only to secure the future of our star. Yet it is plain they will not count continence in a permanent solution. That being the case, we must ask ourselves the simple question. Are we prepared to pursue our chosen course, even if it means suffering the eternal condemnation of our brothers, brethren? If so, I see no further reason to demur. Let us bring forth the light that shall ever after keep the darkness in check. It was they who first summoned Hydaelyn. Their discussion did seem to imply as much, yes. I cannot say I have ever heard of this Venar before. For a certainty, Emmet Selk never uttered the name, speak though he did, of the schism which Zodiac's advent wrought upon mankind. Some were of the viewpoint that his power must needs be restrained. And to that end, did they call forth she who would serve as his shackles. We now know that it was this Venar to whom they looked for leadership. 
and that this place, in all likelihood, served as their headquarters. The presence of such intimate records attests to that. I would hear what else they have to tell us. All of it. Did anyone see the source of the image? Yeah, it came from that thing over there. The device there? Then let us see what other secrets it holds. No, please, why must it be you? If it would truly, if I may speak plainly, I would sooner it would be another, any other. You are our leader. None can take your place. You know as well as I that but few support our cause, far fewer than they who place their faith in Zodiac. If Hydaelyn is to stand a chance of opposing him, I'm the only one who might suffice as her heart. Mr. Shirley, however, I shall not vanish from this world. The form I take shall ever remain my choice. Then I will press you no more. Only know this, you will be sorely, you will be sorely missed. Wonder, is this how the convocation felt about Elizabeth? Forgive me, but did that not strongly imply that Elidibus sacrificed himself to become Zodiac's heart? Seven hells. Then who or what are we dealing with? The device appears to activate via a form of ethereal attunement, not unlike an etherite. Beyond that, I can say little of certain, save that we should take this opportunity to see what other records it contains. No response. Confound it. If I, my lady, the panel may did merely emit a soft yet perceptible glow, that is, doth so no longer may betoken the depletion of some essential energy within. Given how long it was laid in dormant, I think it's fortunate it functioned at all. That may be, but if we can't get it to work again, then we'll be leaving more questions than we've answered. The white robe emissary has ever named himself Elidibus, yet if the shade spoke true, Elidibus ceased to be ere the sundering came to pass. This calleth to mind a truth that Emmet Silk did not once reveal in passing, that the names of which we know our friends are not those given to Asians at birth. Rather, they are titles of office, ordered to individuals of Barrett at such times as the role became vacant. Perhaps the Elidibus at Zodiac's heart and the Emonstrae with whom we are acquainted be not one and the same, but predecessor and successor. Possible. The previous Elidibus perished during the final days, the one we know could still be a survivor of the Sundering, yet something in that explanation rings false. I will remain for a time. It would not abandon my attempts to revive the device so soon. There's more to learn here. I can feel it. 
matters of etiology, I know of none as capable as thee. If there existeth a means to learn more, thou wilt surely find it. Whilst thou, thou art thus engaged, we shall attend to matters on the surface. But just leave your stroll alone here. I'll be fine. You may now enter am Anamnesis Ender with a party of N NPC avatars to take you to the future, but the trash interface. Can we but uncover Lydibus' true origins, we may yet come to understand his designs. To that end, Yishtoda must needs be afforded as much time as she doth require to complete her investigation. To the extent of the, such things uh, are within our control, yes. Speaking of which, perhaps we should tr trouble the exarch for news on his progress with the spirit vessel. He will, doubt, he will no doubt wish to hear of our own discoveries as well, such as they are. Dare I ask what's going on? Ah, excellent timing. For me, in any case. We have a problem. The vast majority of those gathered here are presently in the employ of the Guard or else one of the facets, and no longer wish to be so. In principle, all are free to change vocation at any time. But a city does require a certain number of people in these positions if it is to continue to function. For the moment, I have asked them to postpone their resignation until such time as replacements can be found. As you may have surmised, we have the Warrior of Light to thank for this. It's you! The Warrior of Darkness! You understand, don't you? Someone's going to have to look after this place once you're gone. We just want to be ready to do our bit when the time comes. And not only here, but everywhere. Which is why we've got to get out there and lend a hand to those in need. That's what you did, isn't it? Even if it was just little things at the start. You helped people. Well, people took both, you name it. Yes, but. And we're trying to do the same. We may have our sky back, but there's no shortage of people who still need help. If we follow in your footsteps, then I choose to believe we too can be heroes one day, even warriors of light. What are we to say to that? We can hardly tell them they are mistaken. They seek but to do good, as you have. But no more can we stand idly by and suffer a paragon scheme to proceed unchallenged.
What? What's happening to the sky? voice you and all and why does it feel like it's inside my head hear feel think I hear it me too did I not tell you my friends you are warriors of light You're back! What you hear is the voice of light itself, and it has blessed you with its power. Welcome to the fold. A warrior of light. I've been chosen. No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This only means you have the echo. <laughs> There's a difference. God damn it, Elidibus. Wait. The falling stars. Were they your doing? And why do you need warriors of light? What, am I to reveal my plans simply because you asked? Nay, I think not. Though the stars, I acknowledge mine. A convenient illusion apt to awaken what little is left of the power that once resided in your sundered soul. That which you and yours call the Echo. And an Echo it is of a symphony, but a fraction of what men in their completeness once possessed. Even those among you who tower over others in the gift have only the faintest trace of it. But though sundered and forgotten, through death and mocking rebirth, it has persisted. A whisper of our past, burned into your very ether, along with the sight of our end. Through the rekindling of memory, I have awoken the ability, just as Heidelin is wont to do when she has need of new minions. The Echo hath ever been thought a gift from Heidelin, a boon granted solely to her chosen. Yet thou wouldst claim she merely awakeneth the power that men should hearken unto? Ah. 
Her voice. Given the perceived simultaneity of her call and the awakening of her chosen's capacity to hear it, it is only natural that we thus attributed the source of the gift. Yet if, in truth, the echo is a prerequisite for hearing her voice, one might surmise that her call never ceaseth, such that all who awaken to their innate gift might receive of the blessing of light at the selfsame instant. In sooth, we bore witness to this but moments ago. At the sight of the star shower, full many in the crowd did speak of hearing a voice in their minds, did they not? Just so. And whenever Heidelin has need of new servants, she is quick to pluck comets from the heavens or create illusions of the same. Why then didst thou conjure this vision, full knowing that thine age-old foe would thus claim those awakened to the gift? Foe? You must be mistaken. As you see, I am a warrior of light. And together with my comrades in arms, I shall save the world. Just like you. Bullshit. More that Abyss reveals, the less I understand that he has made a fine mess of things is plain. He's gone then. I managed to persuade a number of our would-be deserters to reconsider at least or at least delay this departure, but as many are deaf to my entreaties. Young Thier and Vonard are uh, among them, I'm sorry to say, they have quit the guard. Nonetheless, I wish them well. Whatever the best plans have, th have for them might be, the pair have only ever had the best of intentions. One can hardly blame them from, from playing themselves heroes elect and not after being blessed with the echo. And it's not as if we haven't shown the re requisite spirit. Quite agree, though the impetus of this sudden departure may have been words so falsely spoken. The men and women in these footsteps they they would follow are heroes in truth, warriors of light, are but self most of all. And so I must ask a favor of you: speak with them as they embark on their journey, and furnish them with what wisdom you can. Let them off on the morrow launch. They've set off for the Amara launch, that you should still be able to catch them if you, if you leave now. With the effort, I'd say, if I recall correctly, Raubon took the time to usher you out into the wider world many moons ago. Aye. I think that comparison rather falters. Flatters their tailor and Vonard, but the point still stands. They should doubtless be great, greatly encouraged by the warrior of darkness himself to see, see them off. If thou art willing, I prithee, thou mayest safely leave the task of unfolding that which did transpire at Amenesis to us. Okay, back to Monk. You again? Oh, I mean, it's you, sir. Sorry, it's been a funny old day.
I uh, just wanted to say good luck. Let me show you we can take these weds to haunt. I still can't believe it. You come it all this way just to speak to us. I swear we won't let you down. So long as it helps it help someone, we'll do what needs going on up there, no matter how small. And when Lodges starts to loom, we'll be ready to face them. You see if we aren't. Like fast and true, for victory belongs to the bold. We'll be off then. Farewell, warrior of darkness, and thank you. Oh, wasn't wasn't Vonard's skin greener? All right, let's finish off 3.2. Thank you for making the effort. I'm certain your words will be a boon to them. While you're away, the others told me of your investi investigation. We have yet to discuss how to proceed, however. While your findings and amnesis... They did not raise... Imp these important questions as to the identity of our adversary. We are no cl closer to discerning his design, nor do I know of any other potential avenue of investigation. For some reason, we ha we must needs trust in Yishtola's ingenuity and wait for her efforts to revive the ancient's device to bear fruit. Well, you will attempt to, to follow the emissary. Follow the em what if I were to attempt to follow the emissary? Lud Lucifer as he is, his plan compels him to to court public attention. It shouldn't be impossible to find. Especially for one of your experience. It does does seem worth the attempt. Then I'll come with you. Safety in numbers. In combat, perhaps. But when stealth is required, the opposite is true. Happily, I don't plan on getting myself caught, so you no need to worry. Nor do I intend to Venice for moons on end. We still have the empty to attend to, don't we? All right. I look forward to your return. And it sounds like the rest of us should avoid go doing anything which might uh, prompt Elidibus to look too closely at our movements. Insofar as possible, I recommend we limit our activities to the Crestarium. Speaking of which, Exarch, might I ask if you made any progress with the spirit vessel? Of course, we are presently studying the principles of underpinning memory transference, and I believe nearing the requisite level of understanding. Less heartening, practical trials of transference methods suited for use with the vessel have yet to yield satisfactory results, put it mildly. But there are still many promising possibilities we have yet to test. Indeed, though it may take some time yet, we, have, we are well on our way to solution. And it sh I shall not rest until one is found. Oh, we are grateful of our, thine unstinting efforts. Thou needest not labor for the exclusion of all else. If it would serve to lighten thy burden, however little, I should gladly offer mine assistance. Quite. I, for my part, will do what I can to ensure that the Crystallium continues to run smoothly in spite of recent disruptions. 
Then perhaps I could help. There must be something I could do, even if it's just guard duty. Thank you, all of you. I shall breathe easier with your, for your assistance. Of course, on the evidence of the recent past, I will not be long before, before some new crisis arrives to throw our plans in disarray, at which time your services will be publicly in demand. That being the case, case, perhaps you might take this opportunity to retire to your suite at the Pendants. Oh my gosh. I'm already going three and a half hours. Took longer than I thought. Oh, we're going to our suite, but... Herbert won't be there. Usually when they send you to your... to, to the, uh... to your in-room. Essentially what it is. Then we go talk to Herbert. Oh. I'm relieved to see you are unharmed from the co earlier commotion, though if I may, you do look somewhat wary. Soon you'll be retiring to your suite. Very good. Do let me know if there's anything you require. I uh, didn't mean this to go three and a half hours. I did. Master Winsmall, it's Ginnard from the Wandering Stairs. I apologize for coming so late. A friend of yours was asking for you. Do you remember them from the business with the Cardinal Virtues? Uh, well, there's a bunch of them. Uh, Aynor? You know, I, I bet you if whoever I click there is who ends up showing up here. Hey, welcome to my suite. What's going on? Hey, forgive my late visit. I heard the man who call, called himself the warrior of light, light speak, you see, and saw the stars falling from the heavens. Never grew tired of my endless fretting and bade, bade me come upon you if it would put my mind at ease. They're not uh, they're art, you can tell me. Exposition? I don't I'm not even sure what I I don't remember what I actually say here. Well, I'll find out. An imposter. Did you might say that? I believed him. I wanted to believe him. How wonderful it was that even one of them returned, I thought. Yet, if he is not the man you knew, then I, I, I know all too well how that feels. I can only imagine how it must hurt to be unable to speak the truth. How you must abide the lie for fear of condemning those fallen heroes once more. It may not be my place, but allow me to offer you a few words of advice, as you once did me. Remember how dear he was to you. Be brave. Hmm. 
Hey, you've certainly grown. Oh, I'm not half so eloquent as you, but I hope that it helps. Meanwhile, in the Crystal Towers Umbilicus. If I cannot imbue the infernal thing with my power via magical means, we may need to devise a way to infuse the vessel with my blood after all. Oh. Art thou unwell? Perhaps a brief respite? It wouldn't do to overtax yourself. I'm fine. And given to stubbornness, I'm afraid. Especially when I have a stake in the outcome. Dinos, you look so much better without all, all that, like, floofy armor. Still a little pretentious with the coat just hanging on your shoulders. And... Meanwhile, in the source... A recurring dream? They do so fascinate me. Might I trouble you for the details? I have always dreamed of it. Fire falling from the heavens. And the city, nay, the whole world ablaze. Indeed. Could Emmet Selk have found a way? Precious few possess memories of the final days. The final days? Why, yes. 
Admittedly, my knowledge is mostly second-hand, but if you are interested, I will gladly tell you the tale. The Tale of the World's End. Way more heroes. All right, this is enough. That's enough. Three and a half hours. Over three and a half hours. Three hours and 40 minutes almost. Before we get going with the next quest, talking to the manager of the sleep, the sweets. Uh, I'm going to call it. Uh, I stayed probably longer than I should have. Or I should have done this a couple of hours earlier. I, I was doing a couple of things. That were not really stream worthy. Oh boy, I'm getting so close to the end because we've got 5.3, 5.4, and then 5.5 quests to go. It's like three more sessions with, with this type of thing. Oh boy, what are we gonna do after that? We're gonna do. We're gonna actually examine all the different job quests that there are. Because what my hope is by the time we get to the point where I'm done with MSQ, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this little feature here. We got a few parts here. We got this, this, this. I can also go into, well, Chronicles of the New Era. So I could probably go run through some of these. We've already been through Crest Tower. I haven't finished any of the rare readings <laughs> or the, tr the trial things. Uh, here are some of the, the bigger side quests. This I could probably actually get to. This I'm... this is a brilliant idea to do the Hildebrand quests. Uh, roll quest for some reason, this is not quite finished. I have to... Why is that not quite finished? But we also got like all the god... god Anyways, by the point. And I'll just go through like Pugilist Month. I'll do this one. I'll do this one, this one, this one, this one. I haven't done it on this character. But we'll we'll do it on Elegos. So you, so you can see it. I'll have everything but the last one for most of them. Because I'm assuming by the time I get to this, I won't have everything to 80 like I'm hoping for. Uh, Blue Mage has one. But this is so difficult to get done that I'm just ignoring this. But the, the rest of them... I'm going to work, work on. But I'm hoping that because of how long it would take to do some of these. That'll give me time to, to catch up. But we'll also do this. And trust me, this is actually pretty cool. And even these. It's it's pretty cool. But we're, we're working on main center. We're trying to get this all taken care of. Yeah, everything was in four parts. For for each one, so. Anyways. So that's that's how I'll be be doing them. So Hopefully that. I need to work on that. That's basically what I'm doing offline is working on Elegos some stuff. Although there's a few things I kind of want to do in Elegos here, but I'll be doing those, focusing more of those when I'm basically done with Elegos. So anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Oh, I need to get all these to YouTube. I have not even touched it. That's all right.
Thank you.